So thank you very much again for the invitation to visit here. Uh, as mentioned yesterday, when I gave a more detailed talk, uh, 20 years since I was last in Moscow, and, and, and things changed. But maybe outside of Moscow, the forests, the, the land use and land cover, those things are changing a bit more slowly. So I'd just like to start the... Uh, what I've got here is a few, few very summary slides of what we're interested in. But I thought it was really interesting this morning when I think... And I think, uh, hopefully, I've got this right with the translation, that uh, there's a real lack. In, in surveying the international literature, there's a lack of uh, papers where the study sites have been in Russia. And we could probably debate why that is uh, all, af uh, all afternoon. Uh, maybe we can also talk about things to address that. And then I saw another, I think maybe the same or a different presentation, where, where the co-authors, Eric Kashishki, Nancy French, Maybe those, those were the, the good times. And we maybe need to think about how we can, uh, if we feel that, that we aren't in the good times at the minute, how we can uh, bring those back. So I, I'm involved in a number of institutions. But I also want to get across that the interest from space research, because space is really of interest to young people. It's really of interest to uh, uh, some businesses now. The space sector in the UK, the industrial sector is really, really growing. The government is putting lots of money into that. And what we in the university have to do is kind of push back a bit in terms of uh, giving away some of our, our knowledge to industry, but saving it for the good papers and the, and the high quality research and then thinking about how it might be used beyond that. Uh, and uh, what I've heard over the last few days is, is some very uh, interesting projects that really overlap with some of our interests in uh, machine learning, data processing, uh, new indices, new satellites, and so on. So I think you know the good times could could really come back. Uh, I think what characterises University of Leicester, we're interested in many different data sets with many different wavelengths. We really want to promote the use of Sentinel data. In the post-Brexit, if it happens, landscape, we will still be a, a contributing member to the European Space Agency. Those data sets uh, are, are re really interesting, and, and the time series that they are going to generate. Uh, so, with, uh, you know, I, we strongly believe Sentinel-1 has a, uh, a real role to play in understanding the dynamics of some of these landscapes. And that's not just with backscatter, that's looking at the interferometric properties. There's some great work going on. Uh, used to, a guy used to be at the University of Nottingham, Andy Souter. He's using these temple stacks of interferometric data to see how the surface is moving up and down. And that's, of course, of huge interest to maybe uh, some of the uh, wetlands and peat bogs uh, to see what's happening as they kind of melt and, and freeze and so on. So we, we could very easily, and without too much trouble, you know, with some specification of area and dates, look at how the how the interferometric properties from a C-band radar are through the winter summer season. And that would be quite a... And see if we can detect some of the changes that you're detecting with optical data. And then we can look at the kind of dynamics of these, these landscapes. As, as I mentioned yesterday, a bright white signal means a strong, uh, uh, stable scatterer. Any colours in that indicates a change of the surface. Uh, and some of us here will know that the, the, the kind of radar is very much sensitive to the structural properties on the surface, uh, uh, as well as some of the moisture effects. And then we can look at classification. There's a, still a lot of interest in classification. I think in most talks we've heard NDVI, but now we've got some uh, finer spectral indices that we can derive from Sentinel-2. And in the future, we can probably look forward to hyperspectral uh, space-based instruments as well. So that's something to think about. Uh, we're interested in validation, of, of course, and thinking how you can use data sets of different spatial resolutions to uh, uh, verify the, uh, the accuracy and determine some of the contributions to the uncertainty. So we've done some work on uh, statistical measures of burned area, and we've heard a lot about wildland fire. Uh, and we could, we could uh, again, think about how we can build a system so we can quickly produce a new uh, variant of a, of a wildland farm product and determine whether it's actually made an improvement. Uh, we think there's huge potential in uh, using Sentinel-3 as a kind of uh, substitute or a proxy for uh, MODIS. And we've done some work with Chinese colleagues 
on that. That work's taken uh, quite a few years to come to fruition, but uh, heavy commitment from both sides to visit each other's countries, spend time there, send PhDs, send postdocs, receive PhDs as well. It's really started to pay dividends. So I think we could, uh, part of our discussions in, in the future, of course, is how some of this activity can be funded. So combining here thermal and optical data, uh, and we've just announced a PhD proposal to try and integrate Sentinel-1 soil moisture into this kind of... So we're seeing things at different wavelengths telling us about different surface properties. And we can do that dynamically over time. I think what we want to also say is that uh, uh, Leicester's creating a new building which will co-locate geography, geologists, environmental scientists, with physicists and astronomers, with chemists, atmospheric chemists, people interested in pollution. And that's not only quite a, a novelist, but in my experience in our university, but also working with uh, some businesses. And, and the door is always open for our international collaborators. And that will be a very important part of the, uh, 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 the next generation of, of interactions. It's going to open in 2021, and building one, of course, is Earth observation, the downstream side. Uh, and I like to think that also that uh, Leicester can be a gateway to other organisations and institutions within the UK interested in Earth observation. We host the National Centre for Earth Observation, which is a, uh, a strategic uh, government uh, uh, entity supported by the National Environment Research Council. Uh, and there they're more interested in uh, more long-term uh, Earth observational uh, developments, but mainly for science. And Professor Martin Wooster, who unfortunately can't make it, he's also a member of NCO, as well as colleagues from in Edinburgh and so on. So we, we have an entity that links in with other organisations interested in Earth observation. So when you come to visit Leicester, we can also put you on the train, because Leicester's very central, as we'll discover in a minute, and send you off to various places like Durham, Cambridge, Oxford, and to talk to other organisations. Because so the UK is actually quite well organised, I think, I believe, in its uh, uh, approach. And this space part Leicester will be different to maybe Surrey Satellites and University of Surrey or the Highwell Space Campus, because I believe that we've got students there businesses, international collaborators, uh, and that interplay between uh, research projects and funding and opportunity uh, will, will be extremely interesting uh, and welcome to be part of that uh, uh, process. So I just want to show a little video on this. Uh, I think it's working. Uh, so we can see that... Uh, of course we go to London, because everyone can co-locate London, but believe me, there is uh, life outside of London in the UK. Uh, there we are in Leicester, the centre of the earth, home to the best football team in the world, second best of course after Liverpool at the minute. And we're actually going to be occupying the site where our National Space Centre is. So we have a strong link to the education of children and raising the awareness of space. And our programs with China also include space education through what's known here as the Space Academy. So we can start to uh, get the interest of future generations. And we can't avoid it with satellite telecommunications, sat-nav, and of course Earth observation. So this will be my new office in a year and a half's time, and I'll be the first through the door. Uh, and then how I get across the town to teach will, will uh, be a different uh, matter. Phase two is a bit more space engineering, a bit more space physics, uh, and there's also some space for businesses to occupy uh, 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 as well. I'm very happy because it will put my commute on my bicycle down uh, from about 30 minutes to about 20 minutes, uh, avoiding the city centre as well. So. Uh, We also have laboratories, public labs, uh, workspaces, business hosting uh, room, and most importantly for our students, we have lecture theatres. So I'm currently teaching a master's programme in remote sensing as part of our geospatial science, and we'll try and get the students to come, come over. 
And part of our collaboration, of course, international collaborations, is hot desk in space for our uh, visitors. It's fairly rare these days that uh, uh, we get a new building in the UK for anything as exciting as this. Uh, and uh, a few people, people looking very smart here, clearly no students in the picture. And clearly we can't compete with the number of satellite models or actually real ones that you've got here. But if you want to donate one to this new NA, then uh, I'm sure we can sort that out. That's me at my desk in a nice big office with a, 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 a nice view over the, uh, the countryside. Yes. So, I think just to kind of uh, put that into context, this is uh, a university uh, development uh, with support from uh, uh, the UK government through our Leicester and Leicestershire Enterprise Partnership. So, uh, uh, Leicestershire, uh, Leicester City Council and Leicestershire County Council uh, uh, and also through through business and that's that's an interesting model and, and we look forward to getting into that and I think uh, uh, a place to start uh, uh, hosting visitors from uh, the Space Research Institute to spend uh, one week or, or one month or send students to the UK for a short time uh, we've got uh, and this is where we'll need the support, I think, of the uh, Science Innovation Network to help us to uh, coordinate and, and, and support us in that. And I'm sure that will arise. So thank you very much. And I look forward to the discussion uh, in due course. Thank you.